and welcome to the channel. Today what we want to talk about is a new preview feature and that is monitoring Azure Logic App Standard with diagnostic settings. Let's go. All right, a little bit about why this episode is important. So this is a, a feature that a lot of people have been asking about since it does exist inside of consumption previously and people were looking for the same option inside of Azure Logic App Standard. And so that's what we're here to talk about today. We've recently added support for workflow runtime logs in diagnostic settings found in Logic App Standard. And just as a reminder, this is in preview for now. So what does this do? This ultimately will allow you to send workflow related events to Log Analytics Workspace or what's also referred to as Azure Monitor Logs. Now, what are some of the events that you can expect to be sent? I've got them on the screen here, generally related to your workflow. So you've got workflow start and completed events, trigger started and completed events, action started and completed events. And if you do use batch, the batch mode inside of Logic App Standard, uh, we also go ahead and capture these events. Now, this isn't just for a log analytics in terms of like being able to publish these events. We naturally support the other sources that you would come to expect. So if you want to use uh, event hubs, you can do that. Or if there's other partner solutions that you're using, that is also available. So let's go ahead. Let's just jump into a demo. There's sort of no, no substitute for that. And we'll walk through the feature in more details. All right, so this is the workflow that I'm going to use to help go ahead and demonstrate the capabilities that I've been talking about. As we can see, we've got HTTP trigger. As part of that trigger, I do have a custom tracking ID where we're just going to extract order ID from the inbound message itself. I've also got a compose, an HTTP, and as part of that HTTP request, I'm just going to have a hard-coded uh, value of just logic apps. Obviously, you can use an expression here or whatever makes sense. But the point is we're going to have a track property that's available. And then we're just going to go ahead and have a response going back. So let's now go into our logic app here and then just show the diagnostic settings configuration. So we'll go into our logic app. And then in our left navigation, just scroll down. And once you get to monitoring, just look for diagnostic settings and you will go ahead and see this experience. Now, I've already gone ahead and set this up, but it's kind of the equivalent of clicking on this add diagnostic setting. You do wanna then select the workflow runtime logs. You can also include the function application logs. However, you're gonna get more of like function related events. Uh, the new capability that we're talking about is really the workflow runtime logs. That's where we're gonna get the the uh, events related to our workflows, which are gonna be most important. But if you do wanna supplement, go ahead and click the function application logs. Now you do have the, a choice of like, where do you wanna emit this data? Uh, for my example, I've emitted it over to a log analytics workspace, but certainly if these other options are interesting for you, go ahead and enable those. And then naturally when you do so, you're gonna to have to go ahead and select the, uh, accord, the appropriate resource that you wanna send the message to. So uh, that's how you go ahead and configure it. And then once it's configured, probably expect about 30 minutes before you start to see those events actually showing up in your instance itself. Now, what I've done is I've gone over to that log analytics workspace that I talked about. And what you're gonna see now is this new table. So logic app workflow runtime. And I went ahead and I ran that logic app that I just showed you. And what we can see is the related events that are included in it. So let's start with like the workflow run started and workflow run completed. So those are going to give you indications of, you know, the start and finish of the event. Now, for those of you who might ask, why are there two records? Well, it's one of those things where sometimes actions or even uh, workflows can be long running. So it's one of those things where if you don't have a start event, you'll never know um, if something is, is running for a long amount of time, could be days, right? Or even months uh, in some cases. So that's why we do have the start and uh, end events. Now, if we go ahead and open up this workflow run completed, we're gonna get some additional information. We've got the workflow ID. 
we've got the workflow name, we've got the run ID, so this is that value that you would typically see in that run history record if you ever needed to search, you wanted to look at it you know, detail in more detail. And then we also have a client tracking ID, which we did see on that trigger itself. And then the resource could be interesting for you as well. So that is the workflow run complete. Then let's go ahead and take a look at say our trigger. Uh, and maybe let's go look at the trigger completed event. We can see the status, so it's successful. If we want to look for failures, like that would be an indicator we could go ahead and look for. Once again, run ID, we've got the trigger name as well. And so that's some additional information that for you too. Now, just looking at the columns that we do have available to us, we can see start time, end time, those are naturally useful. The succeeded, uh, essentially what you're gonna see is when you've got completed events, it should say succeeded. The started is where it's, you know, it's a kind of a point in time, so you'll see running. So you're gonna want to like more focus on the completed events because if something has failed, then you should start to see like a failed uh, status or a code that represents the failure code. And then naturally, if there's an error, seeing that information showing up there as well. Uh, we've seen the action name that uh, could be useful for you if you wanted to query for a specific action name. We do have the client tracking ID, right? And you can see that that's propagated or populated across all of the related actions and triggers. So that could be quite useful for you if you had like an order number and you wanted to query just for that and see it end to end. You can see that being quite beneficial as well. Uh, track properties, right? We had that action where we did have the track property. Uh, so we'll go ahead and be able to see that. Naturally, even though it's kind of a key value pairs, you would be able to go ahead and, and query that using Custo as well. And uh, I won't show the tenant column there, but uh, there's also some additional columns we can see here as well if we wanted to add them. So maybe tags could be of interest to you as well. So that is you know, what you can expect to see uh, with these records. And so this should help you in terms of crafting up some custom queries that might be useful for you. Naturally, you know, with the use of workbooks, you could go ahead and uh, build out some queries and uh, store them in a workbook and then be able to go ahead and share them and, and reuse them and uh, with you know your other colleagues and that's where we can also see like this pin to right where dashboard send a workbook or if you're using grafana itself so that's a quick demo uh, go ahead try this out and uh, let us know what you think and uh, yeah at least for folks that have been looking at this uh, waiting for this feature it's now available in preview and uh, go ahead and check it out Thanks again for checking out this video. If you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and find me at Weirzy. Like, subscribe, comments, always welcome on YouTube. Thanks again for checking out this video and look for another one soon. Take care.